angry guy here and men are living longer lives without women while women are living shorter lives without men. Men are living longer lives without women while women are living shorter lives without men. So this is pretty crazy. I've talked about this, the subject a bit, but I want to show you this article. And this is actually a very recent article. Does life, does being married improve life expectancy and why it's okay to be single? This comes from Mark Stibich, PhD, a researcher. And it was medically reviewed by Carly Snyder, a medical doctor. So when you, you are growing old, who will take care of you? For many, the caretaker will be a spouse. But does marriage actually improve life expectancy? Here's what the research shows. Marriage was one of the first non-biological factors identified as improving life expectancy. The explanation given was that married people tend to take fewer risks with their help and have better mental and emotional health. Marriage also provides more social and material support, which means having someone to take you to the doctor or care for you when you are sick. However, research shows that the difference between married people and single people in terms of health is narrowing. This could be because the definition of marriage are changing or that people have other outlets for care. The changing phase of marriage and life expectancy. No one is saying that having a piece of paper that says married on it is going to improve your life expectancy. However, there is something about people who live in a marriage that improves life expectancy, or to be more precise, there was something, correction, was about people who lived in a marriage in the 70s that found that was found to improve life expectancy. So going back 50 years ago, life expectancy was improved if you were married. That was 50 years ago, half a century ago. So this data that says that life expectancy increases when you are married, it's outdated. This happened, this data is from 50 years ago. This data is no longer up to date. Being single can be healthy. Now people can be listed as single, never married in census data, but be living with someone and be experiencing all the benefits of marriage without having the marriage certificate. This complicates research on marriage and health. Being single can be healthy. Research shows that people who are single, especially men, are living longer than before. In the past, men who were never married typically had the lowest life expectancy, but now the never married men are closing in on their currently married counterparts. Experts believe the difference in life expectancy is becoming smaller because single men now have access to support and health resources that in the past only came because their wife took care of them. In other words, 40 years ago, married men had the advantage over never married men because they had their wives to make sure they went to the doctor and took care of themselves. Now men are taking more responsibility for their own health, and, it's, and it is normal for a man to express concern about his health and take action. So a lot of men in the past did not take properly care of, proper care of themselves. And you can clearly see that. That's the reason why you had guys in their 40s looking 60 or equivalent to a 60-year-old or sometimes even a 70-year-old today, you know, in today's day, even, even older, even older, to be very honest. Because if you go back to like the 80s, you had a lot of these guys that they had the George Jefferson and, you know, they, they, they looked old. They looked absolutely old. Like, guys, think about this. Sherman Hensley, as I mentioned to George Jefferson, this dude had that, he had the George Jefferson with the bald spot when he was a young man. This dude looked old as a young man. Okay? Like, this is, so we're, this, this is a very different generation of men. This generation of men takes better care of themselves. They don't need a woman to provide for them, to cook for them, to clean for them. They don't need a woman to take them to the doctor. You know, this generation of men, they don't need, you know, they know how to eat healthy. They know how to take care of themselves. It's it's very, very different. All right, so let's continue. 
now men take more responsibility for their own health, and it is normal for a man to express concern about his health and, and take action. The pain of being widowed, losing a spouse who who you have lived with for your for your entire life is devastating for husbands and wives alike. As a result, research shows that people who are widowed have slightly worse health than people who are married. This is an issue that has gotten worse in recent years. No one really knows why the experience of being widowed now is more detrimental to health than being widowed in the past. However, it is possible that people had more of a community and extended family to help them out. Now the widowed are more likely to be isolated. Regardless of whether you're single, married, or widowed, there are things you can do on your own to improve your longevity outside of a relationship. So, this article is from August 21st, 2023. And as you guys can see, men, single men are now outliving their married pairs. They are, they are living better, healthier, happier lives. And we can tell that a big part of this is because these men do not have the added burden that they don't want to say it in the article. These men do not have the added burden and the added stress that come from that comes with a relationship. Relationships are very, very stressful. Relationships bring lots and lots of problems in the lives of men. They absolutely do. They are not good for anyone. And it is within our best interest that we stay away from them. Men are more likely to end up in poverty if they get married. They are more likely to end up destitute if they get married. Their stress levels are more likely to be significantly higher if they get married because they spend, you know, they go out into the world, they're fighting in the world every single day, and then they come home and then they have that added stress and added pressure. And women are basically saying, we're not going to take it anymore. Everything that the man does is a problem. And I've said this before, they don't like us. They absolutely don't like us. And then to make matters worse, when you look at community, it's very hard to develop relationships with a lot of other men today because a lot of other men are absolute simps. A lot of other men are simps, and they would destroy the life of another man just for the sake of being with a woman. They have, like these guys, you talk about NPC, these are true NPCs. These are absolute NPCs. So a lot of men are like, yeah, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want the stress. I don't want the BS that someone else is going to bring into my life. You know, someone said in one of my, that someone commented in another of my, one of my videos, and they said that we need a code of conduct for men. You know, we need a covert code of conduct. And it's absolutely correct. We need a code of conduct. Men need a, we need to like, we need to put together a covert code of conduct that, that has to be kept among men. You know, like this is how you're going to behave and men need to follow this code of conduct or there will be social consequences. It's just, and it doesn't matter who you are, you know, it's police often, everyone, men in positions of power, like, you know, every man knows that there are certain codes of conduct, certain behaviors that will not be tolerated. Okay. And we need official, we need an official code of conduct for men again. And Sims, if they want to step outside of that, they will find consequences very, very quickly. They'll find themselves in prison. They'll find themselves being put, put, they'll find themselves being blocked from being able to participate in certain things. Oh, so you're one of these guys. Nope. No participation for you. That's it. You know? Yeah. No, you're going to go to jail. You're going to go to jail. Like We need official codes of conduct. Because as you can see, guys, to, in today's society, the idea of marriage is like it's completely gone. 98% of men are, are avoiding marriage. Okay? Out of for every 100 couples, only one couple is getting married today. Only one out of every 100 couples. That is 98%, 98% of men are no longer marrying in the United States, in Western society. And everyone thinks this is a game. Now, one of the things that makes this pretty interesting regarding the life expectancy of men, as I've talked about this, 
while the life expectancy of single men has increased, the life expectancy of single women has rapidly declined. U.S. millennial women are now more likely to pass away in their late 20s and early 30s than any generation since the WW2 era, so women born in 1928, rates of being control alt deleted maternal mortality, uh, rates of control all deleting oneself have increased for all women aged 25 through 34. The sudden reversal in progress for young women's safety comes despite an improved economic status. So despite the fact that women are more more educated than ever before, despite the fact that they're making more money than ever before, despite the fact that they have been out, out earning their male peers since the 90s at the very least. Actually, and according to Thomas Sowell, this has actually been since the 70s that women have been out earning men since the 70s in the workforce, right? For decades, young women in the U.S. saw sharp drops in their health and saw sharp progress in their health and safety with each passing generation, but that, that momentum has now reversed for millennials and Gen Z women. And that's according to a November 30th report published by Washington, D.C.-based nonprofit Population Reference Bureau, which studied the well-being of women aged 25 to 34 for each generation in America. And it found that women born between 1981 and 1999, widely classified as millennials, have seen the first drop in well-being since the silent generation as they live through young adulthood. And, you know, and women today are more likely to pass away during their late 20s and early, early 30s than any other point uh, in the previous three generations. However, you also have high rates of Gen Zers, Gen Z young women also passing away, which is extremely alarming, extremely alarming. This has never happened before where you had so many uh, women in their in their teens and 20 and 20 and early 20 somethings that are passing away. This is absolutely insane. So the rates of passing away has risen in parallel to, to a startling increase in, uh, more, in mater maternal mor uh, mortality rates among women aged 25 to 34. So another important point, to, another important thing to point out is that women who are having children, the few women still having children, are now seeing higher rates of passing away. This is a strange stuff. So it's, it's, it's more dangerous now for a woman to give birth than it was 40 to 50 years ago. Okay, so with 30.4 uh, 30 deletions due to pregnancy complications out of 100,000 births for millennials, the report said that's compared to 21 deletions per 100 births for the silent generation. Guys, 30.4 deletions versus 21 deletions per 100,000 births for the silent generation. So a woman today who is giving birth, has, who is pregnant, has a higher chance of experiencing complications and, 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 and deletion than a woman who was born 100 years ago. Okay, so almost 100 years ago, we're in 2024. Women in the silent for, for the silent generation were born in 1928. 1928, guys. So that's that's 96 years. And women almost 100 years ago had a significantly lower chance of passing away during uh, you know of passing away due to pregnancy than women than women today. This is this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Okay. And it's not a result of data collection because even though they changed the way that they collect data over the last couple of years, they've also noted that after U.S. state after U.S. states implemented a new data system in 2019, pregnancy rates of pass of women passing away continue to rise sharply. Absolutely insane. This is crazy. So millennial and Gen Z women are also the first, also the first in the last century to experience rising rates of control alt deletions with seven control alt deletions among 100,000 women ages age 25 to 34 this is this is crazy this is absolutely crazy and rates of control alt deletions for millennial women rose to 4.5 deletions 
per 100,000 women aged 25 to 34 compared to just 4.3 for Gen Z. Gen X women, not Gen Z. Gen Z is like Gen Z is absolutely ridiculous. Gen X women when they were the same age. This is crazy. And then vile and then uh vile deletions among young women actually fell to 3.3 per 100,000 in 2017. But statistics now show the rate swelled so quickly in the last six years that it surpassed that of Gen X. So even before the events of 2020, this was starting to happen. This is crazy, guys. And then, it ex- and then after 2019, it just accelerated. So after 2019, things went absolutely insane. And since 2020, we've, it's just completely been flipped on its head. And the numbers have accelerated rapidly. Absolutely rapidly. Hmm. This is crazy stuff. And this is all happening despite the fact that that millennial and Gen Z women are doing, you know, they that they should be doing better financially, but they're not. So at least 43.6% of young millennial women have uh, graduated, uh, women in the U.S. have graduated from college a record level in modern history that's compared to 28% of Gen X women and 22% of baby boomers when they graduated by the time they turned 34. And young, you know, they say young millennial women have also seen a reduction in the wage gap, earning 89.7 cents for for every dollar to men compared to 82.4 cents on the dollar for Gen X women who were the same age. The PRB said it's well-being in and dices were built on statistics for, from the Center of Disease Control and Prevention. So uh, the Labor Department, the Justice Department, Statistics Bureau, and the Center for American Women in Politics in Rutgers University. So they actually took these. This is where things get really shocking. These statistics are government statistics. These statistics act, and they have to cite their statistics. These statistics m- come from the United States government. All right. These are not statistics they made up. These are not statistics they collected for themselves. These are the so the government has the government is well aware that this is happening, and the crazy thing is, you know, modern women think that the government that that uh, big daddy government is going to come and rescue them, but government's doing literally nothing to save them at this point. Government's doing nothing. At best, they'll say, "Oh, here's a couple of dollars. You know, here's some UBI money." You know, so men are living longer lives significantly longer lives now and women without women you know men are men single men are living longer lives substantially lo- longer lives while single women are living substantially shorter lives without men but hey feminism is great and you know hey keep it up ladies like this is this is the reality of it this is the absolute reality of it Guys, if you're enjoying the content, help get the channel to 100,000 subscribers on our journey to 2 million by subscribing to the channel if you already have it, liking the video, and turning on notifications to never miss another video ever again. Men are living longer lives without women while women are living shorter lives without men. Let me know what you guys think regarding this. I want to hear your thoughts in the comments. So let's talk about it there. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA, men walking away, and cheers.